Hey guys, welcome back. So now we're jumping back into Dark Ages, to where with this one, more than anything, I'd say we're getting a bit more of a look of how this world has changed, not just on land, but at sea as well. So let's get into it. But first, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch the spills every week. And don't forget to hit that bell up top so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. All right, so jumping back in right after the surprise Trojan horse style attack with Apocalypse sending Quicksilver back to Wakanda under the control of Zebedai Kilgrave, which resulted in the death of Okoye and Johnny Storm. But in addition to this happening, Sue Richards with the loss of her brother, and from what she knew at this point, she thought she had also lost Reed, but with Quicksilver telling everyone that Tony's alive, Reed's alive, and that they're being controlled and working with Apocalypse, and for Sue here in this update, she then stormed out to find a way to get to Europe so that she could do whatever it takes to save Reed. But then it's here we jump over to one of the ports of Wakanda where a refugee vessel has just arrived and is being captained by Nightcrawler, who lately we've seen quite a bit go back into the swashbuckling role. But here within Dark Ages, which is like your alternate near future, Nightcrawler's the captain of this ship and he's accompanied by multiple men who's nearly the rest of the entire crew. But then aside from him, you got Colossus who's like the heavy lifter while they're out at sea. But then also, because there's no power, they had ended up converting the helicarrier, which we had seen fall from Grace a couple issues back into a ship, which really isn't that far off since these things are designed to operate on water before they take off. But even still, with something this huge having no power, it's a lot of work to get this thing moving. But at this point, with them bringing in a number of refugees from Europe to Wakanda, and it's also here we find out how they've been able to move the helicarrier without it effectively having power, which at this point has pretty much just been by opening the sails and having Storm provide the wind currents that would push the helicarrier from point A to point B, which for Storm is no light task. Because sure, the scale of her powers is ridiculous, and she could very well lift the helicarrier. But for her to exert that amount of power for a long period of time, for her it would be extremely exhausting. And even with this method, sure, she's fatigued by pushing a helicarrier with over 100,000 people on it, but this method at least allows her to save some of her strength. And it's faster than the steam engines aboard the helicarrier. But with her arriving back in Wakanda with the refugee vessel, and with doing so, she's greeted by her husband, the king, T'Challa. And I'm not sure if I mentioned that before, because I also feel like it's one of those moments where I would go deep into their history, but this time I'll probably just leave some links in the description for that because we've been through a lot with these two whether it was in the main continuity or even in other alternate timelines by way of the brass frogs of king solomon back when t'challa had to kill tony stark because he stepped in wakanda with the wrong foot but yeah there's plenty that could be said but i'm gonna try not to digress too much for this one but once again i got those links down below but also with the refugee ship coming back to wakanda and storm arriving back she's also greeted by her and t'challa's daughter and Kozazana. But then also, as Pepper and Sue are making their way over, we then get this moment where Storm asks Ayo, where's Okoye? And right then, like her daughter tells her, daddy says I'm not gonna see her for a long time. And with hearing this, T'Challa's then like, Storm, let me talk to you on the helicarrier real quick. Cause at this point, Storm had just got back and she has no idea what just happened with the whole Quicksilver incident. But before her and T'Challa can even get into that conversation, we then follow Pepper and Sue as they approach Admiral Fury and they fill him in on what all's happened since he's been gone. But really it's here where Sue, she asks Admiral Fury if she can take one of his ships to go to Europe and get Reed. And on one hand, you can tell that she's only asking for one ship and a small one at that. So it's not like she'll be taking too much away. But for Fury, like with her asking for so little, not only does he not think that she'll have a chance when she gets there, but he highly doubts that she'll even make it there. Cause she could run into Namor, she can run into the Raiders. And as far as the Raiders, we'll talk more about them in a little bit. But aside from them, there are a number of monsters just in the sea amongst the other threats that she could just run into along the way. So with hearing this Admiral Fury, he asked Storm if she's up to the task for heading back, which King T'Challa quickly objects. But as Queen of Wakanda, she tells T'Challa and the others that she will go. And as a result, she tells them and the others that they'll leave in an hour. And when they head out, they gather others to go as well, including Moon Girl, Devil Dinosaur, Blade, Honey Badger, Lord Kenny, Wolverine, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Spider-Man, Doom, and they head on their way. But by the time we get to Nightfall, Storm's exhausted because she's pulling a round trip here. But when this happens, we get a moment to where Storm, she takes a break so she can get some rest. And it's here we then jump over to this conversation between a group of the heroes and already Doom, he's trying to let people know like what we finna do. And you can tell it's not like an official meeting, but rather he's kind of pulled these people to the side and he's kind of like, all right, all right, all right, so look. So, so we gonna rescue Reed, right? But while we there, we also gonna kill Apocalypse and just take over. 
because why not? And right away, Laura's kind of like, okay, well, let me guess who's going to be the new ruler. And when she says that, Doom is slightly offended because he's like, if I wanted to take over a kingdom, I would have taken Wakanda. As if he's proposing this strategy because he thinks it's in everyone else's best interest. Well, we all know good and well that if there's any power that can be taken or even some that shouldn't be, then Doom is definitely going to go for it. And Jessica Jones makes a valid point when she mentions that it wasn't but a little bit over seven years ago when that was pretty much Dr. Doom's MO. But then in the middle of this conversation, when they hear screams coming from the top deck, it's then here where Luke, Peter, and Jessica find out that May and Danny have stole weight on the ship after being given clear instructions that they should have stayed in Wakanda. Because aside from rescuing Reed, they're taking the risk of going up against Apocalypse and whatever other tricks he has up his sleeve at this moment. And that in itself is really not the best situation for a bring your kids to work day. But then it's here as May is explaining what had happened, both her and Peter's spider sense go off at the same time, and right away they just see this bright light just coming across the ocean. And then boom, Nick Fury is just impaled by a hook, a fiery hook at that, and he's just yanked off the helicarrier. And come to find out, this was done by the Ghost Raiders. And in the case of these guys, they pretty much used to be like your regular pirates. <laughs> and even with saying that, like, what's your regular pirate? <laughs> but for these guys, seven years ago when the world had blacked out, they were pretty much stranded out at sea. And in the act of desperation, they had sold their souls to Mephisto. And ever since, they have been the Ghost Raiders, who are responsible for thousands of deaths by just intercepting whoever they would catch slipping out in the open ocean. But with them taking Fury, Kirk quickly tells Storm that they gotta keep the helicarrier moving, cause if the raiders catch up to them, they will burn that ship and it will continue to burn all the way to the bottom of the sea. But even with them keeping it moving, they're still trying to get Fury back, but by no means can they stop to do this, because again, if they stop, then it's over for everybody that's on board. But when this happens, you have Colossus who does his classic Wolverine throw, but of course in this case, it's Lord Kenny and Honey Badger. But with them keeping the helicarrier in motion while also fighting off the raiders, and also trying to get Admiral Fury back, Captain Kurt, and not Captain Kirk, but Captain Kurt. <laughs> it sounds like I'm saying the same thing. But he lets them know that they just gotta make it to the Guardians of the Port, so at least then they can help them do away with the Raiders. But while they're under fire, and better yet Hellfire, Kurt makes his way to teleport over to the Raider ship in the middle of all this chaos so he can snatch up Fury and bring him back. And while this is happening, everybody on the helicarrier, they're just letting off everything they got. And I mean, except for Blade and Devil Dinosaur, who are kind of just watching and roaring. Like if let me show up and act like I'm doing something was two people, it'd be them right now. But then in the middle of this chaotic exchange, Bing Bang Boom then shows up out of the water separating the two ships and then just blasting the raiders because come to find out scott lang and fing fang boom are the guardians of the port and don't ask me how this team up came about that's just who they that's what they doing now but for reasons we may or may not get later on fing fang boom is on the side of wakanda but with the refugee ship making it close enough for the Guardians to intervene, the Ghost Raiders are at least pushed back for the time being. But then it's also here where we see Kurt make his way back with Nick Fury, only to find out that Admiral Fury didn't make it. And I just want to say right here, like it's noble that Kurt went and got his body, but even with seeing this, I'm hoping that nobody was on the refugee ship thinking that Admiral Fury was going to survive after being impaled by a flaming hook. But instead, it's more so of a thing the mourning his loss. Like, I'm, I'm just hoping that's the case. But with this happening, Admiral Fury is dead. And it's kind of messed up when you think about him telling Sue that he didn't think she would make it to Europe because he thought she wouldn't stand a chance against the Raiders. But at this point now, when we look back at the tape, Sue, she, she did all right. But Admiral Fury? Not so much. Like, he, he was legit the first one to go. And it's pretty wild how that played out. And so now real quick, I want to give a special shout out to all the patrons. Thank you guys for all of your support. And for anyone who's new here who wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link below so we can go to patreon.com slash dope spill. But that'll do it for this one, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And we'll do it again on the next one. All right. Later.